folding of the group 1 intron creates an active site with a unique arrangement of bases and a few key metal ions. The active site pocket for guanosine is composed of three sets of triple base pairs stacked like a sandwich. In this stack, the central base pair is only a Watson Crick that is available to form a base triple with the guanosine cofactor. The binding of the guanine of the cofactor thus completes the triple base stack. A triple base pair is built in two steps starting with a standard Watson Crick base pair, such as GC. The third base, such as guanine, comes in parallel to the other bases, and as it does, so forms hydrogen bonds to the available face of the GC base pair. This is called a Hoogstein base pair. Hoogstein and Watson Crick base pairing have a common theme of chemical complementarity. They always involve a hydrogen bond donor and acceptor in each hydrogen bond. In the triple base stack, the bottom triple involves a Watson Crick AU base pair with a Hoogstein AA pair. The center triple involves a Watson Crick GC base pair, which is available to form a Hoogstein GG interaction with the guanosine cofactor. The top triple is a Watson Crick GC with Hoogstein interactions formed with an adenine base. In this case, the adenine interacts with both bases of the GC pair. When the guanosine cofactor comes into the active pocket, the base slips in between the top and bottom stack to complete the middle part of the stack of three base triples. These and additional interactions with the ribose hold it in the proper orientation for the reverse chemical step. Michael Bean's lab conducted an experiment to demonstrate the specificity of the central base in the active site. They mutated the central position of the triple base stack so that it was CG instead of GC. They found that the guanosine could no longer serve as a cofactor and self-splicing activity was lost. However, Bean imagined that the adenosine might be able to rescue activity from the non-defective ribosome, since the adenosine can potentially form a specific Hoogstein interaction with the CG base pair. When they added free adenosine to the reaction, the mutant ribozyme, in fact, regained its activity, but the addition of adenosine rescued the first, but not the second step of the reaction. They then reasoned that in order to restore full splicing activity, the guanosine at the last position of the intron should be mutated to an adenosine. This mutation indeed rescued the second step. Group 1 introns are considered metalloenzymes since metal ions are essential for their structure and catalytic function. In addition to stabilizing the tertiary structure of the ribozyme, metal cations are involved in catalysis. Three metal ions, A, B, and C, are believed to be involved in the splicing reaction. In the first reaction step, metal A activates the three prime hydroxyl group of the guanosine cofactor. Metal B stabilizes the leaving group, and metal C together with metal A neutralizes the developing negative charge of the transition state. Experiments by Dan Herschlag's lab determine which metal cations participate in catalysis in the active site. This is called a metal cation specificity switch, or metal cation rescue experiment. The experiment is based on the differential affinity of a hard metal ion, such as magnesium, with oxygen and sulfur. Magnesium is a hard metal, which has higher affinity for oxygen compared to sulfur. Alternatively, cadmium is a soft metal which has higher affinity for sulfur compared to oxygen. The first step of the experiment involves generating two RNA substrates for the reaction. One is the normal substrate, whereas the variant substrate contains a single, ca uh, single atom substitution, sulfur for oxygen. The variant substrate is identical in every way to the normal substrate except for the single atom substitution. The site of substitution is chosen to represent the oxygen atom that is thought to bind to magnesium in the transition state of the reaction. In this experiment, each substrate is denatured and refolded in the presence of magnesium or with a combination of magnesium and cadmium. In the case of the natural substrate, we predict that catalytic activity would be lost in the presence of cadmium but not magnesium. That is, cadmium should block the reaction when it binds in the active site in the place of magnesium. For the variant substrate, we predict that activity would be rescued with cadmium, but not magnesium. 
Rescue of activity is expected if the metal ion is required for catalysis and because cadmium interacts with the higher affinity sulfur. Rescue should occur when cadmium binds to the active site and has a sulfur atom to interact with. We conclude from these experiments that there are three metal ions and their interactions in the active site are vital to the function of the ribozyme. In summary, ribozymes are highly specific for the reactions they catalyze, similar to protein enzymes. They have a native structure that is required for activity, and when denatured, activity is lost. The native structure is key to forming the active site, which binds specifically to the substrate and which transforms substrate to product through the high energy transition state. Ribozymes use catalytic strategies similar to those used by proteins. These include acid-base catalysis, use of metal ions, and precise alignment and positioning of the substrates to be reacted. And they restrict the motions of their substrates to favor the reaction process. Ribozymes also strain bonds, stabilize any developing charge in the transition state, and stabilize leaving groups like protein enzymes. Differences between RNA and protein enzymes include the ways in which the active sites are structured to recognize their substrates. Ribozymes do the most appropriate things for nucleic acid enzymes. Their active sites function in substrate recognition by forming base pairs in base triple stacking interactions. The presence of numerous ribozymes in existence today adds depth to the richness of diversity in our contemporary world of biological catalysis.